What's up everybody? My name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a whole a variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today we are reviewing Spirit Chronicles and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership, link to those are below. We are reviewing Spirit Chronicles episode 4 and this one show that they are other reincarnated people besides Ryo. And Ryo visits a town right after he leaves the kingdom that was giving him so much BS because he's a commoner and such. He stops by this area called the Kingdom of Galark, I believe it is called. And there, he first encounters this thing called soup pasta. He's looking at it, he's like, pasta? And the vendor who was selling it was saying, yeah, the great Lisa Latte showed us how to make this. She created this recipe and showed everyone how to make it. And yeah, I'm selling it. Rio's eating it. It's something he's really familiar with. Then he goes to another place from the vendor's recommendation and it's menju and it turns out it's meat bun. So this person, Lisa Latte, guarantee you she's a reincarnated person because she is using stuff from the previous world, Earth area, which is spaghetti and meat buns. Guarantee this person is a reincarnated person just like Rio. And then Rio goes to a merchant guild and there he meets this chick named Lottie. Mm-hmm, Lottie. She shows him all over the place, but the thing, ooh, I must mention this. She noticed his black hair, which I find really interesting because it pops back up again. Anyways, she shows him around the merchant guild. Bruh, it literally looked like a grocery store. And Rio bought a lot of stuff. He bought a lot of stuff and he was having tea with Lottie and he was writing a letter to Celia. He used the merchant guild's um, wax seal, which will let Celia know where he is, how he's doing, etc, etc. And then after he leaves the merchant guild, after buying a lot of stuff, he is preparing for a long trip, let me tell you. They reveal that Lottie was, was Lisa Lottie. And it's interesting because when the vendors were talking about Lisa Lottie, they were showing a silhouette of someone with like long hair. And it didn't occur to me that she was Lisa Lottie because she had short hair and a ponytail. <laughs> But it was her, and this is why she noted on his black hair because where they were from, where I think she's from, is Japan. And a lot of people in Japan have black hair. So Ryo probably looks like a Japanese person. Then Ryo is in the forest, right? And remember the title of this episode? Assassin Girl. The Assassin Girl! She attacks him! Well, she was tailing him the whole time. She was doing it really, really good. He's in the forest. She pretends she's like hurt and such. And he goes to help her. And then she's like, psych! And she's attacking him. They're fighting. Oh, this fight scene is so good! Oh, I feel like that each episode is only going to have like one good fight scene. The animation is really good. I'm wondering if they're only having one good fight scene. <laughs> for the great animation i'm theorizing this because other shows that i've seen that have multiple fight scenes some fight scenes are good some fight scenes are not so good so i'm wondering if they're putting all their resources into one part and they're purposely doing one good scene per episode let me know what you guys think if you've seen that pattern so far and if not what have you observed the back to the anime, they're fighting, and then Ryo, he defeats her, and he finds out that she's wearing a collar, a collar of submission. And the interesting thing about this, before he defeated her, before he defeated her, well, actually, while he was defeating her, he, you know, pinned her down, right? And then her eyes just changed. It went from dead eyes to all of a sudden she had a bunch of emotions. And she's scared. She's terrified. She's like, I don't want to die. And she's getting pretty hysterical. So Real knocks her out. And that's where he 
saw her collar of submission because he took off her cloak that she was using to conceal herself. Took off her cloak, took out her weapons, and that's where he saw the collar of submission. He's like, oh, dang, she must have been following orders to come kill me. So he dispels it. Thank God. Yay. And when she wakes up, he's talking to her. And we get, like, flashbacks for this girl. Her name is Latifa. We find that out later on. It gives, like, a little hint that she's a reincarnated person. They do a flashback to before Rio died in that bus to a little girl. And then they flash to her waking up. And this kid with gray hair, that punk that had a freaking nap and pushed Lady the Princess. Why did I call her Lady? Princess Flora and put the blame on Rio. So that gray hair kid, his name is Stuart, he owned Latifa. And oh, he's such a punk. I thought he was going to have a redemption arc. No, he's so not going to have a redemption arc. He's so cruel to Latifa. He activates the spell to hurt her just so she can call him Big Brother. Esteem Big Brother. What a sicko. Oh, no redemption for him. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. No. And then it flashed forward to present time with Latifa, and she realizes she doesn't have to call her. And you just see how vulnerable she is. And it's quite amazing to see this huge contrast from when she's like a badass killer to this vulnerable little girl. I don't know when she manifested in this body. Because if we remember Rio, he got all his memories from the previous life when he was a kid, right? But he had about five years to come to terms with it, to go through those memories, and just fuse both lives to make him. I'm assuming Latifa didn't have the opportunity like Rio did by taking this life and the previous life and fusing it together because all the knowledge she had was just from the previous life. That's what I'm thinking. And because of that, this world, after she's free, outside, Rio frees her outside, this world is so foreign to her and the only person she knows that's nice to her is the one that she almost killed so she sticks with him and Rio tells her no you need to go to the wilderness go east that's where beast people and demi humans are you should go there i'm going east let's see if it's like can i go with you at first Rio is very resistant to it he's being a realist he's telling her you know, you just try to kill me. Why should I trust you? And she's like, I, I, like, oh, she's so vulnerable. She's so, it's so sad. She's literally a little girl. And then Rio kind of gets a soft spot. But he's still a realist by telling her, you know, if you try to kill me again, I'm going to kill you. She's like, that's fine. That's really fine. If you don't trust me, you can use this collar on me. And Rio's like, okay, hold up. We don't need to go that far, okay? But she's so desperate to go with him. So they're journeying together. He's taking care of her. I'm assuming they're getting to know each other little by little. And then one night, they have the soup pasta. And Latifa calls it spaghetti. And this term, this word spaghetti, was not used in this world. So that's where he was like, oh, maybe she's like me. She knows what spaghetti is. But he has his suspicions. He's keeping it to himself. She's eating it. She's like so happy. So happy that she's eating something she's familiar with. And it's so sad when she was enslaved by that Stuart dude. She was only given pet food. And when she first had real food, she cried because she only had pet food before. The oh, that was heartbreaking. A lot of her crying scenes were heartbreaking. Sometimes when I see crying parts in anime, I get annoyed. Because I'm like, why are you so dramatic? You're crying a lot. But her, it's very reasonable. I like it. There's a reason for everything. Pacing is great. And then that night with the pasta, she wasn't crying. But when they were sleeping, she was crying. And she was crying for her mom, her dad, her brother, and she wants to go back to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. She just confirmed that she is a reincarnated person. 
She is that little girl in that bus. Mm-hmm. And another thing, Latifa also noted on Rio's black hair, and she recognizes him from the bus. The bus that they were riding before they died. So that's where we confirm that it's her. Because she is a little girl, we saw from her perspective. Yeah, etc, etc, etc. And this is where Rio has more empathy for her. He's like, okay, I need to comfort her heart. And it's like, yes, please comfort her heart. I know you're a tough guy, but please be nice to her. Comfort her. And he is. Oh, he's doing so good. And she's calling him big brother. It's like, oh, so cute. But girl, you guys are going to be separated soon. He's bringing you to the wilderness to drop you off. So you got to not attach yourself too much because I feel like that's going to cause trouble. And at the end of the episode, they go into this forest and Rio says that there's this huge tree, but Latifa can't see it. So it seems like this tree is very special, special to him because he can see it. Maybe it's related to spirits and such. They're in this forest and Latifa says she's sensing people, non-humans, but they're far away, but they're, and then they're camping at nighttime. And all of a sudden, the campfire that they had goes out. Rio goes out, outside a tent, I mean, <laughs> and he sees this big wolf-like creature and bright light. That was the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. And the next episode is called Forest of Spirit! Yeah, spirits again. Spirits, when it's spirits, it deals with Rio. It's something special, especially for him. If you guys have any predictions for the next episode, let me know in the comments below. And if you've seen the episode and I missed anything, please let me know. Let me know what you wanted to talk about. Start a discussion. And if you haven't seen this episode, what's your impression of it from this video? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Lihua Superfina. If you watch these videos, do like to stop by the stream. Have one-on-one real-time conversations. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lihua, and this is the Superfina channel, reviewing Spirit Chronicles Episode 4. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.